Kia decided to make a depressingly slow news day even more tedious last Thursday when it finally confirmed the worst-kept secret in contemporary automotive history. I'm John Logan from AutoExpert.com.au. New cars cheap, but Australia only. Website, card. The drip feed on Kia's new ute is nauseating and, of course, infinitesimally quasi-static. Non-news just in. That's right. They finally, officially confirmed it's going to be called the Tasman. What a shock. Thank Elon. I was standing close to the defibrillator when that one dropped. Of course, the name had been reported widely all around the world for about 10 months now, I think, after Kia filed to protect the Tasman name in patent and trademark offices worldwide. That was last June. Kind of hard to cover that up, you know, being on the public record and all. (sighs) Come on, dudes, this is not news. And of course... Nobody in the softcock, sycophantic motoring journalism world is calling them out on it because they want the advertising rivers of gold to keep on flowing. So I see that as something of an opportunity. You can buy an EV if you want, that's allowed, free country, blah, 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 but it's going to depreciate to nearly nothing in 10 to 12 years, if it lasts that long. And it's not actually that effective against climate change. But for less than 20 grand, you can get a quality rooftop solar system with a battery backup. If you've already got solar, you can just add a battery. That's dead easy too. Solar's going to slash your electricity bill, add value to your house, protect you from power failures, and the battery can store the electricity that you generate during the day and divorce you from the grid overnight for a fraction of the cost of an EV. Visit autoexpert.com.au slash solar now. I've just partnered with a leading Australian solar specialist. I've known the owners for years. They do hundreds of installations every month. They handle the whole thing, the rebate, the approvals, the bureaucracy, and they use only quality components from suppliers with good local support. In other words, the roof's not going to be leaking afterwards and you won't be emailing the help desk in China if there's some problem. They'll just sort it for you. In most cases, you're going to be up and running in a day. If you don't know a kilowatt hour from an inverter, no problem. You'll get a reliable system that'll slash your power bill at least and might even be cash flow positive. It can even make your house apocalypse proof. Not only can you get seamless blackout protection, the solar array can continue to charge the battery when the power is out. That'll keep you going for days. Extreme weather events and grid instability, that's just how the future's gonna be. This is protection against that, and it's easy to do at a fraction of the cost of an EV. Nobody likes paying for electricity, I get that, and it's never gonna get cheaper. This is how you divorce yourself from that upward spiral as well as burning the coal that goes with it. Coal is, of course, the biggest source of CO2 emission in Australia. Home solar is how you take effective climate action today. And unlike an EV, a good solar system with a backup battery will typically add many times its cost in value to your house. Visit autoexpert.com.au slash solar today. Just fill in the contact form and find out how simple and cost effective the right solar and battery system for your home can be. The name Tasman is, of course, inspired by legend cartographer and closet feminist Abel Tasmanius Thatcher, who back in the dream time, swung down out of the trees and carved off a little triangular patch of old-growth forest from the southern tip of Gondwana land to stand as a warning against future waxy patriarchal oppression of women, thus cementing his place as the patron saint of free-range pubic hair. 
It's in all the history books, dude. Abel Tasmanius Thatcher, look it up, you dead set legend, dude. Never once danced on the bar in his light blue jocks before attempting to drive 120 kilometres home in the bag. Go figure. Probably couldn't catch or kick for shit either, but he was a pretty cool cartographer. He also dug a trench to the east and filled it with sharks, if memory serves, the better to keep sheep shagastani hordes from ravaging the mainland any longer with their obscure animal husbandry practices on Friday evening, thus establishing a free trade market for coveted fleece grease, which you might think is just an industrial product, but it's clearly much, much more culturally significant than only that. The team at Kia Australia has been working closely with the research and development team at headquarters to develop Tasman, a vehicle we believe will meet the needs of our unique market. So it's very rewarding that it has been granted an Australian-inspired name befitting its personality. Fully qualified PE teacher and boss of Kia Australia, Damien Meredith there, hot on the heels of that wonderful ad campaign in which everyone pretended that nobody knew what the name actually was, including high-range drink driver Alfie Langer and Australia's binge-drinking envoy to the disunited kingdom, Booney. Oi, 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 chaps. British Leyland, of course, identity thefted Abel Tasmanius's proud name in the 1970s and sullied it irrevocably by conferring it upon the Austin Tasman, a distinctive and uniquely engineered vehicle that would become the somewhat hermaphroditic progenitor of one of the most iconic British automotive shit heaps of all time. <laughs> the Leyland P76. Gorgeous car. Wheels car of the year, 1973, incidentally. The P76, evil daughter of the Tasman. They've been so shit at calling car of the year for 50 super consistent years now, wheels. Near death now, though, sadly. Dr. Kevorkian is on speed dial, of course. The relatives all clustered outside, beside themselves. It's something of a vigil. Australian-inspired name befitting its personality, indeed. The Tasman. Let's hope Kia's free-range pubic-haired phoenix, rising from those particular ashes, is even better than its antecedent. We have strong ambitions for Tasman in our market and the fact that its name has such distinct links to our region is evidence of Kia Australia's instrumental role in its development and future success. Like you of course, I am still trying to figure out exactly what that actually means. It is a bit corporate word salad vomit, isn't it? Any time I'd suggest a sentence gets to 30 words, you really have to grab a mirror and stare into it just a bit, don't you? Like, there's only one Hemingway and odds on, you're not him. Does he really believe that a de facto blessing from the ancient patron saint of free range pubes is instrumental to the success of a ute down under? I certainly hope not. Because I think they could almost get away with calling it the Beaver, or Big Nuts, capital N-U-T-Z, provided, of course, it was as good as a Ranger or a Hilux and somewhat cheaper. And please don't get me wrong on this here, okay? As my shirt, carefully selected for this report, clearly implies, I love the Big D, and I think he does a pretty good job at K-Backwards N in Australia, a big demo, like, I'd suggest that they never would have overtaken Elder Sister starting with an H without him. They wouldn't even be in the top ten without Big D. But I do wonder about these nebulous bullshit statements in press releases more broadly across the entire industry. Everyone, it seems, so to speak, is doing it. 
I've never understood statements of this nature, like not fully. That's a confession, I suppose, but roll with me on this. For starters, nobody I know, and I'm tipping nobody you know, ever actually talks like that. Have you noticed? And if they did, you'd freaking send them to a re-education camp in fucking Pyongyang, wouldn't you? I certainly would. Imagine that, being there, being re-educated. It's all sitting down for dinner. On the menu this evening, gentlemen, there's grass harvested from just outside and snow in a cup again to share. Perhaps you'll learn to communicate quickly in more concise and more meaningful sentences. Perhaps tomorrow we'll let you go. Like, that could work. Re-education wouldn't take that long, would it? With that kind of incentivization. Like, where exactly are these quoted official statements actually made? Are they even ever actually made or are they just totally made up? Totally contrived for a press release. Is the alleged speaker ever actually involved in the words, except perhaps to sign off on them at the very end? Does a senior executive ever burst out of the executive washroom holding a megaphone and no pants and issue a statement such as that, a high-volume decree across the bullpit, redefining epistemic reality suddenly? If they did, they should sell tickets because I would pay to see that live. Do they say this stuff in the bath, I wonder? Perhaps while applying Tasmanius Thatcher's trademark eucalyptus balm to that otherwise unruly hair. The better to prevent, uh, what would you call it? Entanglement when rushing from video conference to board meeting and then out to lunch, etc. I'm not sure about the in-bath ticket sales potential, but the other one's a goer. Or does somebody just make this word salad up and just... <laughs> vomited out onto the page. And it's really all just a bit of corporate pantomime for the media, a bit more non-news to report. But you can post a few ads around it and it's easy to do. Perhaps we'll never know the truth of it. And speaking of things we don't know, let's start with anything significant about the new Tasman other than the name, which we pretty much already fucking well knew. After all this time and money putting ambassadorial binge drinkers and high-range in-jock, bar-top, dancing drink drivers and other sporting heroes, of course, such as, uh, I don't know, that pair of geniuses from the Broncos Fight Club, putting them all out there, proudly representing the new Tasman and pretending not to know its name in a pub. I tell you who's never going to buy a Tasman, okay, just seriously at this point. Anyone who cares about anyone who's ever been injured by a drink driver. I got quite a few messages to that effect in those earlier reports on this, like hashtag reality check, fuck's sake. Anyway, you, I'd suggest, still haven't been presented with a single fucking reason to wait to put off your acquisition of, I don't know, a new Ranger or a Hilux or a D-Max or even a She-Max. I mean, BT-50 or the new Triton. To me, this is insane. Give us a reason. Kia is running a conveyor that's dumping cash into a giant communication incinerator. And if I'm Mars or Trev or J A Double R Y Double D Jared from Rooty Fucking Hill or somewhere, i.e., that stereotypical tool in a wild track. I'm simply not getting a single tangible reason not to buy another wild track before June 30, before Christmas, whatever, and just forget about the whole nebulous South Korean connection to unfucking waxed Gondwana land. Dude. Kia just offering a ute, okay? That's not a reason. Naming it after the patron saint of free range pubes. Not a reason. Links to two of the objectively worst cars ever on Australian roads. 
That's not a reason. A few South Korean engineers coming here to see just how shit our outback roads are for themselves. It's not a reason. I want my reason, dudes. I want a reason. Don't buy a Ranger because we're about to take a great steaming dump on Ford from 20,000 friggin' feet by offering A and B and C in the Tasman. That's a fucking reason. Tasman is Kia's most important vehicle launch ever down under. Like, they kicked a real goal with Stinger, and to be fair, that was mostly dumb luck and serendipitously excellent timing. Like, thanks very much, Ford and Holden, for folding at exactly the Goldilocks moment in history for Stinger. Then they wanted EV6 to do the same thing, only, of course, be electric. And that basically turned into the Felicity Ace colliding with the Titan submersible because average people in Australia don't want overpriced, impractical EVs. 200 EV6s sold last month. That is not how you dominate a market, is it? So, EV6 is not electric stinger, nor will it ever be. But I tell you what, dude, there's roughly 18,000 4x4 utes getting sold every month in this country. That's just the 4x4s. It's not the 4x2s or the high riders or any of that stuff. Just the 4x4 utes. Every month, 18,000. Like freaking clockwork. People really, really want them. They're buying 600 4x4 utes every day. And none of those people has been handed even the hint of a reason to wait for the Tasman. A tenuous link to the hermaphroditic mommy and daddy of the P76, car of the year, 1973. It's hardly enough. It's not nearly enough. Just give me a reason, dudes. I want a Tasman because, I don't know, Tiffany won't wax until I sign up. Whatever. I don't care. Sign me up. I'll wait. Let the waxing continue. <laughs> give me something I can friggin' relate to. Tell me something I don't know about this new vehicle. Something that makes me want it. I want a gag for a new Tasman, dude. I do. And I'm not even feeling the tiniest itch in the back of my throat presently. And I would argue that that is a serious problem. I want to engage low range and park my frickin' Tasman in a space that's already fucking occupied by a Hilux Rugged X. But at present, I'm not even vaguely interested. Not vaguely. Not vaguely Tasman titillated, dude. When I hear Tasman in a press release, my eyes frickin' glaze over because I want actual news. Not this crap, not this drip feed of non-news. Why is it better than a Ranger? Tell me, dudes, just let it slip. And for fuck's sake, please don't make the next press release an extreme close-up of the grill in low light. The better to invite speculation about how the full Tasman, as they still call it in Fishwick, might ultimately look because this endless Tasman prick tease with no glimmer of tunnel-ending light is a reason, it's a real reason, for customers to go out and buy a Ranger or a Hilux tomorrow. <laughs>